Hey, hey everybody, how are you? So, early feed, I suppose. Uh, excuse me, early live stream, uh, a few minutes. I hope everybody is well. So, in this video, inspired by a recent consultation I gave, how do you develop those designer eyes as a developer so that you can make your web apps or your websites or your apps look half decent? As you know, I'm a big advocate of uh, you know, what I tell people is that these days, one of the main things that contributes to a website success or failure is how aesthetic it is, how nice it looks. I call it the emotional snapshot. So, um, yeah, it's important that uh, you learn to develop that ability to at least understand and see good design. So we're going to get into this a little bit. Uh, you can see and hear me good. Thanks for letting me know. Thanks for letting me know. Hey, how are you? How are you, Rob? I hope everything is good. So, um, yeah. So I'm going to do the subject at hand. Um, and then I'll do a little Q&A uh, since it's Friday. We're up, up here in Quebec, major lockdown. So might as well do this. Um, all right. So how many people can I? I'll wait for about 70 people to get on and then I'll jump into the subject. So essentially I'm going to give you just a, some quick tips uh, on how to improve uh, your designer's eye, if you will. Very simple, really simple. And then we'll look at some good ideas, you know. Yeah, well, I'll, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me open up with that. I would agree that um, you either have it or you don't in terms of design. And one of the, one of the game, one of the things you have to do when you get into any any fields to figure out where your strengths are. So if you're not a designer type, I wouldn't try to become a designer, but you should at least learn to be able to differentiate between good design and bad design. All right, thanks, Michael. Hi from Austria, audio good, visual good, cool, cool, cool. Hello from Scotland, looking forward to another great stream. I appreciate it, thanks for jumping on, Mr. Ultimate Warrior. Awesome video, cool, cool, cool. Uh, material design is the way I naturally design material in UX. Okay, cool, cool, cool. It, yeah, it's very simple. Um, but good design is about having that eye. So this video here, I'm just going to give you some, some very simple tips uh, to help you with that. Now, as uh, Sadiq was suggesting, well, I don't know if he suggested it, but if, if you're not a designer type, you shouldn't try to be a designer, but at least you should try to get a little bit of a, an understanding of aesthetic. Uh, so there you go. Um, and there we go. Thanks for helping us. And God, uh, God bless you. No, no problem. It's my pleasure. Thanks for joining the stream. Sorry for the lockdown. Well, it's not your fault. It's, uh, yeah, what can they do? They're trying anything they can try, you know? Um... All right, so I'm, we're at 42. I'm going to wait for about 70, then I'll jump into it. If you have any quick questions you want to put in, uh, well, let me, if you're brand new um, to web design, then I'll suggest my book. If you're brand new, is it going to focus? Focus. There we go. So if you're brand new to web design, discovers the basics, HTML, CSS. This is the UK edition. You can get the American edition as well. And if you are a developer who's done, you know your basics of software development, you're starting to write uh, code, starting to write apps, then you want to get this book or the JavaScript version of this book. Uh, if you look in the, in below this video, you'll find links to both books. The JavaScript version is the one for people who are writing JavaScript. This is the Java version, my original version. If you want to level up your game as a coder, developer rather, this is the one for you. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, welcome for your efforts. Nice guy, as always. Glad I could help. Thank you. Thank you. Geez, you're turning out a lot of content over the holidays. Are you going to keep this rate up in 21? Well, I used to do videos almost daily. Um, I've just been busy with all kinds of work. And um, so that's why I had to slow down quite a bit. Now I'm, I've just released a new, uh, my money course. I'm releasing my wizard, wiz, lizard wizard course, a few other things, but this is all kind of wrapping up. So I plan on doing a lot more daily content. Uh, it's, it's my hobby as much as it, as it is anything else. What do you think about, what do you think of design technologists? 
I'm not sure what that is. That is, if you're going to elaborate. Hello from Austin, Texas. Cool. Cool. Yeah, I plan on coming down there at some point soon. Uh, as soon as the, uh, we're able to. Are you more of a designer, front end, or back end? I was full stack when I did my work. I was much more full stack. So my design skills are like, they're pretty good, pretty good. My back end skills, uh, in terms of writing um, code, I was very good at writing very clean, simple code. But I was more of a full stack type of guy. Wasn't a, an amazing designer. I was a good designer, but not amazing. I asked about your opinion on lead developer versus senior full Slack developer. I got I got to pick. I went for senior full full stack developer job. Hey, congratulations on the job, man. That's cool. Uh, hi from Argentina, from Iran. Where do you get this book? Just look in the links below. You'll find a link to them. You can get them on Amazon. Uh, Pakistan. Ah, thanks for joining. Uh, I really look forward to your feedback. I have started Python course after doing JS course. Started a Python course. Cool. That's cool. The more languages you learn, the better. Uh, how can you tell if you're brand new? I feel newish. How can you tell good design from bad design? Elaborate on that. Uh, is there a difference between is there, is there a difference in definition between web development and web design? Yeah, it's a big difference. Development means programming, writing web apps, which are basically websites that act like Sorry, applications. I couldn't quite hear you. Could you please repeat what you said? Uh, Siri. Stop it, Siri. Yeah, I have... Uh, to stop here. Check if the device is on your home network. <laughs> anyway, so um, yeah, definition, web design and uh, development. Yeah, design is basically making this a site, uh, the, the aesthetic, the, the look and feel of the site. There's no functionality necessarily. Whereas development means you're writing programming. You're writing, um, your site becomes an app, and that means it actually does something. So uh, a static website would be just a site that just looks good, a branding site or something. A web app could be like Facebook or Instagram's website, etc. cetera. Um, Google. What are your thoughts on using something like Bootstrap to do a lot of mundane stuff like login, sign in, sign up? And yeah, Bootstrap was the standard. Nowadays, you have something uh, called Flexbox and Grid, which is basic to, to HTML and CSS. Well, H CSS3, you could just do that. Hi from the Netherlands. All right, 75, 73, it's good enough. So let me just jump into this very quickly, and then I'll do a little bit of Q&A. So um, essentially, I was consulting with somebody today, and uh, I, I suggested to them to develop the designer's eye. Uh, what you need, what you do, is you expose yourself to that. So what I would suggest that you do is you start. If you're not design oriented, you want to learn at least the basic rules of design, proper alignment, make things or make make sure things in your page are aligned properly, consistent font use. Uh, mixing and blending of proper colors. This, you can type in these, these terms in Google, like color blending or color matching, and you can see that in web design. You find all kinds of articles on that. Um, there are basic rules in that regard, but what you can do is develop a, a feel for it, a, a visual feel for it, if you will, meaning you'll be able to start seeing good design when you see it by exposing yourself to good design. Uh, it's kind of like a musician who, uh, if you're jam a lot and you get pretty decent, you know when the change is going to happen when you're playing. You don't have to look at each other. You just know, okay, here's the change. Boom. Um, same thing if you're doing a lot of uh, martial arts or MMA or boxing. You'll be able to start seeing, just by the way that the person handles themselves, how, uh, how well trained they are, just by the way they move and so forth. You get this eye for that. Same thing with design. So if you expose yourself on a regular basis to good design, the top sites, uh, top design trend articles, et cetera, et cetera, you will slowly, step by step, start developing at least a decent eye. And this is gonna be very useful for you so when you are developing web apps and applications, you'll be able to see, okay, this looks pretty good. Or this needs a lot of work, that kind of thing. I hope that makes sense. So. Um, how are we doing here? So let me just jump into a few examples. So here's some sites that I, I just I picked out because I like. So here's Stripe's website. And I'm just telling you, if you can't see it, this is just 
good, clean, simple design, right? Very simple, nice, it feels good, it looks professional. This is going to have uh, a very positive impact in, in terms of how people perceive any websites that you build. So you just start exposing yourself to good looking sites. Like Stripe is one, that's an obvious one. Apple, of course, Apple is famous for good design. Again, it's obvious to me, you see big, clean images, you know, meaning not pixelated, very sharp photos, uh, consistent font use. You notice how everything is lined up nicely. Um, you know, this big hero footer here. A hero footer is just a footer of all kinds of information, links to all kinds of sections in the site. And if you look at the menu, let's click through. Again, you notice big, clean images, right? Nice. So it's, if you look at Stripe, Again, even though they're not selling products, very similar. I don't know if you can see it, but you see a very similar kind of aesthetic, right? Let's go to Sony, for example. Again, you know, it's, it's easy to find good examples of great design. Just go to some of the top players in the game. That said, uh, these are, you know, to me, on the top level. Now, if it's good, let's go to a good... They're a little bit more simple, but their tool is sort of geared towards coders. So even though it's clean and simple, it's still good. You'd be amazed with, if you just um, have good alignment in your pages, so you don't have text flying all over the place and, and the boxes are even as we saw in these sites. You have just use one or two font faces in a page. You mix and match your colors properly and you have really good images. It makes a big difference. Like you, if you look at um, back to JetBrains, you know, it's very simple, very simple. Very clean, you know, and again, they can, because JetBrains is selling a uh, code editors, they don't have to have like super high end aesthetic sites like Apple because there's, you know, big part of Apple's product line is the aesthetic, the look of it. it has to look good. So their site has to look good. Uh, now, these guys, uh, Stripe, they make it look good, even though they're selling a payment, they have a payment processor, but it looks good and it just makes you feel good about the product, it makes you feel good about the site. I'm going to toot my own horn. I kind of like what we've did in uh, Studio Web here. Nice, clean, big images, you know, simple read, um, you know, consistent use of fonts, et cetera, et cetera. What else do we have here? We have Microsoft. Um, again, because it's a coder site, again, it's, it's a little bit more basic than Apple, but because it's coder stuff, it's... Uh, its applications, etc. They can get away with it, but it still looks pro. It still gives you confidence in uh, what it is that they do. But I say, you know, Apple does a better job, right? In, in terms of just overall aesthetic. That's why they're Apple. That's why they're famous. So there you go. That's basically it. Very simple lesson, you know, five minutes. Um, I hope you find this useful. For a lot of you, this will be very simple stuff, but I think, um, yeah, there you go. Let's see, green swords, you know, what are the 2021 design trends of being 3D and gradient? Well, you'll find, I think, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't looked at that. I think um, Apple's a good indicator of that. Stripe teams, seems to keep on top of that. Sony, too. I think we're pretty good. I think it's uh, pretty consistent. Um, do you have any new courses at work in that farm? Yeah, I'm, I'm releasing um, soft skill courses, like on uh, one I call Money, one is called Lizard Wizard, and some other stuff like that, you know? Uh, uh, there we go, here we go, stream quality. Yeah, no problem, Ultimate Word. Peace from Morocco, huh? peace from Canada. Thanks for joining. Uh, yeah, exactly. Bootstrap was the, the standard up until Flex and Grid became mainstream. I would use Flex and Grid. That would be my choice because it's 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 native. Whereas um, Bootstrap, you have to, it's a, it's, it's a library. When you have a choice between a library and native, if native is comparable, go always go native in terms of apps. Uh, in terms of, um, well, it would be libraries or code, coding, etc. I was already learning Vue.js from my internship with in Web Studio, I am and I am in tenth grade. Cool, but it got canceled due to C virus yesterday. I, I was so happy to practice there. Well, just download and start working. If you got a computer at home, start working on a computer at home. Don't let the this, the virus stop you. How hard would the PHP learning curve be for me? I have a good understanding of JavaScript, HTML, CSS, no frameworks yet, and I coded Python, Ruby, 
and go before. Uh, you should pick it up very, very quickly, within days. My advice with learning to code is learn the language first in its fundamentals before learning any library framework. Exactly, that's the way to go. That's the way to go. Uh, I like the way you use martial arts as your examples. I did a bit of both. Very cool. Yeah, exactly. Thanks. Uh, Yala Babi, are you crazy? Okay, whatever. It is. Okay. He likes the 45 degree curves. Uh, probably in one of the designs. Um, uh, hi, thank you for your channel and all the videos. I love to listen to you. Greetings from Poland. Well, thanks for uh, chiming in. I appreciate it. I'm glad you're listening. Glad I could help. Hello from Russia. Uh, before designing, learn the DOM. Yeah, you got to learn the doc document object model. There's no question about that. Mm. South Africa, people from all over the world. GitHub has a real cool site design. Very good. Uh, what else? Uh, I always refer to Pantone's website for creating a good color palette. So there you go. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, how? Hello, hello. I hope everything is good. How can I transform my design to actual app? Is there any way to do without having a lot of code experience? Depends on the app. Depends on the app. Um, you, there are builders out there that you can look for, but if your requirements work within those parameters, you might be able to hack out something that works for you. That depends on the app. All right, Michael. I have a customer who wants me to shoot and integrate 4K video clips on his own horses, of, of his own horses, into his website. I have no experience shooting 4K videos. What do you suggest? Sourcing it out? 4K videos can be shot with an iPhone, right? So you can do that. But if you want really high quality videos, then you can outsource that, but he's going to pay. Because if you're going to get somebody who has a camera like mine, which is not cheap, and you want them to, video, to shoot the video, edit it, come out, it could be expensive. What you could do is get like a, a newish uh, iPhone or Android phone that shoots 4K. You could do it that way, but you got to show your client the, um, the difference in quality. So, yeah, uh, editing, is, is, you would have to edit. Again, if you do it all on the iPhone, you could edit all in your iPhone. Uh, but yeah, if he's willing to pay for it, the quality would be much higher if you hire a professional videographer. Uh, what computer do you work on or recommend? Right now, I work on uh, iMac. Uh, I do have um, a Microsoft uh, Surface Pro. Uh, if I was, I, I kind of prefer Macs daily because I just prefer Mac OS. It, it's my, I find it to be more stable than Windows, although I've used both extensively. I would look at the M1, M1-based Mac computers. They're very powerful. You're going to pay a little bit more, but boy, it's going to be good. Uh, depends on what you're doing. It always depends on what you're doing. Finishing JS course and jumping to PHP, hoping to get a job this year. Junior web dev is my goal. Well, keep working at it. Put up that portfolio site, and you'll be able to get there. Greetings from Serbia. You work here on you, you, your, your work here on YouTube is great. Well, thanks. I appreciate you letting me know. I'm glad. I enjoy what I do, so that's cool. Matus, how are we doing here? Is there a difference between European and Canadian U.S. freelance market you are aware of? I am based in Germany. Mostly there are offers for Java and other big enterprise technology in Frankfurt. It's always local. Uh, different languages will be popular in different regions of the world. I know that business... Uh, starting small businesses is, it seems to be, based on my conversation with people who live in Europe, starting businesses is much easier in Canada and U.S. Uh, I don't know if that's what you mean. Uh, how did you start coding? Because uh, I needed to build a website for my business. That was basically what it came down to. It was back in 1994. Uh, can you reveal approximately when the new soft skills courses will be available to purchase on Studio Web website? Um, by the end of January, by the end of January. Uh, well, would you recommend it to copy Apple or other websites design, put them on a portfolio or create your own designs even if they aren't the best? I would, um, what would I do? 
I would be inspired by the best designs. Don't copy them, but just be inspired by them. If you look, I, I showed you a bunch of sites. You see, they're very similar, right? Um, design is a process. Like, you know, like to do the studio website. Let me just get back to it. It Just to do this site, this page here. This was like, uh, I don't know, maybe 30 hours of work, give or take. Uh, myself working with the designer, I basically art direct and my designer would uh, put it to, to, to code and design. It's a lot of work from choosing the images, the color palette, where to put things. There's not just aesthetic design, there's also information design. Like what makes sense to put here? What text makes sense? You know, what, what's the, what, excuse me, what the text should be here? I don't know, I didn't say that right. <laughs> What should you put here? What do people want to see here, right? Boom, right? What color the buttons are? Book a demo, watch video. You notice the buttons are the same color, right? That's the architecture. You know, what videos put where, you know? So this is uh, beyond aesthetics of the design, how good it looks. It's also in terms of logical placement of your content. This is like a good, good 30 hours of work, at least. Now that I think about it, um, possibly much more if you figure all the back and forth. So yeah, it's, um, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, so you want to be inspired by different stuff, you know. Hey, Christy, how are you? Christy from Hawaii. Didi from uh, Europe. Everything is pretty good. I hope everything is well with you. Apro Pro Raw, yeah, yeah. Sony ZV-1, yeah. Do you recommend uh, we're, uh, WPF or Windows Forms for desktop development purpose to develop internal business application? If you're developing for Microsoft, you're developing for Windows, and I would definitely use .NET, you know? If you're doing cross-platform, you want to look at other things. Figma is better than Photoshop and InDesign, in my opinion. Go at Figma for designs before coding. So there you go. I've never used it, so I have no opinion, but you may want to check that out. Greetings from Las Vegas. Oh, I love Las Vegas. Do you prototype and design directly in code or use a tool like Photoshop? That's a good question. It's a good question, so I'll get into that. Personally, what I'll do is I'll bring out, um, hold on. I'll bring out a big a notepad like this and I'll start the sketching out my designs in terms of layout of things. And so I might, I might sketch out my designs, like I might do something simple like, hold on, I'll go like this. I'll go, uh, I want a two column like this. So I'll just hold on. So I'll go header, um, um, you know, and then I'll just say, so I'll do something like this, maybe, right? They're very, I'm just, you know, as I'm doing on a flight, very simple, right? And then I'll say, um, and I'll define sections, and I'll go section one, two, uh, well, this, like this. So we just establish a basic, and, but and it won't say section, it will say what that section is, right? We'll see maybe a sign, it will be here, it will be, um, I don't know, a newsletter form, sign up, right? And then I might have, uh, I'll go, I'll put, I'll say, uh, put a butt here. Butt is short for button, of course. And then I'll just, and then I'll, I'll color palette. I'll say, okay, what's the color? Now I'll say uh, green, blue, I'll make color palette, green, blue, I may, I may actually put the color codes. So I'll, I'll, you know, I'm doing this real quick, I'll, I'll work on this and I'll send this to my, my uh, designer, a very talented guy. So he'll get the color palette, he'll get the actual color codes, he'll understand the section, and then he will start stripping it up. And I'll suggest photo, you know, like what Studio Web, you know, the headers, I, I would put photo uh, st student in classroom. You know, so still, you know, photo student classroom. It's just for me, when you're really trying to get the design out quickly, you just, you just jot down notes real quickly as it's coming to you. Then you take that and so some designers will want to strip it up in Photoshop. Right, they'll start putting photos in there and playing with font styles. I'll, I'll actually indicate font styles that I want. 
And uh, some people will do it in uh, Illustrator or, or some people to do it right in code. I, it's much faster just to work on the design um, with, uh, uh, you know, as Photoshop or something. But there are some WYSIWYG tools, which you see is what you get tools like, you know, the old one was Dreamweaver. I don't know what are people are using now. You can really draw and, and, and put things into place very quickly. So you could do it that way as well. I hope that answers that question. If you like, give me a thumbs up. Um, uh, greetings from Croatia. Are you coding still or just managing? Uh, these days I manage. I occasionally check, take a look at code, but the, the guys who do work for me, I trust, so I don't do code reviews much anymore. When would you be a good idea to hire a freelancer to help you with a freelance job? When you can't get it out in time or there's work that you're not very good at. So let's say you're very good at backend. You're good at writing code and, and writing app, but you're not good at the aesthetics. You're not good at UX, UI. Hire a UX, UI guy, partner with them, or vice versa. You know, it happens all the time. That's a smart move. Mm. I work with both EU and USA clients. EU clients always pays less in my experience. Huh, there you go, that's interesting. Uh, my last chat message, can we get together soon? I am from Mississauga, I would love to learn from you. Eh, send me a DM, you know, we'll see what's up with that. Uh, is it worth working to, for free to get experience? Yes. Is it better to get a job at a, in a company as a junior? But you, 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 a startup, I'm the only developer. For you to get I'm start. I'm the only developer. Are you getting paid? But this is, you, it depends on the circumstances, you know? Um, I always advise people, once you learn your fundamentals, go out there, do two to three, two to three uh, quick little jobs to gain some experience. You learn so much more by building real projects for people rather than getting caught up in tutorial hell or things like, uh, I don't know, code competitions or silly stuff like that. You wanna build real things as quickly as possible. The first two or three is part of the learning process. So yeah, I would do those. But not, not, don't spend six months there. You know, you can learn a lot within just a, a couple months, you know. Data is the new gold. What programming language should you, should someone learn to work with data and get some informative information? What do you recommend if someone doesn't know a lot about coding? Uh, Python. Python. And lucky for you, 50% off code below for our course. I would really love to hear your take on ACF, Elementor, and such, or do you use vanilla WordPress? I have not used uh, those. Um, if people don't know, those are um, not play, they're, they're, they're themes in WordPress, but they're much more than themes. They add a lot more functionality to WordPress. If you don't know, a theme is just a visual template in WordPress, and you have some really powerful ones like Elementor. I've never used ACF. And they add not just the aesthetics, but they add all kinds of functionality. And they're very powerful, but we're sort of caught in that ecosystem, if you will. Um, I haven't used them. So you have to make that decision about uh, whether or not they make sense. Sometimes it makes sense. Sometimes it makes sense. If you do use themes, I strongly recommend, if your business is not being a WordPress developer, to make sure you use a theme where they have strong support and they have hopefully a community where you can hire people to fix things for you if you can't get something to work. All right. Uh, my girlfriend was having troubles with Clo 3D due to some of its complexities. I showed her one of your videos talking about fundamentals. She applied what you said and is now creating very good works. Fantastic. Tell your uh, girlfriend, congratulations. Yeah, it's all about the fundamentals. I learned that from martial arts and fighting, by the way. The fundamentals concept. I learned that from fighting. Um, you know, you. I, I. At one point, I was stuck in the equivalent of tutorial hell and chasing languages and frameworks in martial arts, where I was trying to learn techniques, this technique and that technique and this technique and this technique and so on, all these different styles. And then I realized, in actually fighting with people, that uh, if you have somebody who has Superior fundamentals, and that in fighting is timing, tactics, uh, balance, uh, speed, power, um, body mechanics. If they have that better than you, you can have 10,000 techniques 
And if they just have, they, they beat you with timing and tactics, just a straight punch, a jab, they'll, 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 they'll slaughter you. That's it, just a jab. If they have better timing and tactics, the key with martial arts, like everything else, is to figure out what the key fundamentals are. Because once you got those, I don't care how many techniques you have, you know? And uh, yeah, that's it. So I learned that from martial arts the hard way, getting hit. Um, so I apply that to my business, I apply that to my coding, I apply that to my design. That's why I teach that. You learn your fundamentals, that everything comes easy. And even in programming and coding, I recognize that when I was jumping into it, I would hit like a, a framework. So I'd be writing software and I hit a framework and 99 times out of 100, whenever I'd have difficulty understanding a framework or a library, a complexity in a library framework, it was it was because of some lack of understanding in the fundamentals I had, some hole in my knowledge. So I filled those gaps by learning the fundamentals. Once you have that, then everybody, everything else becomes much, much easier. I hope that makes sense. Uh, uh, Figma is great. Uh, sorry for my last match, I have had like that. No, no worries. Howdy, Dave, how are you? Uh, ah, that's a good question. How do you choose a color palette for your the website? Um, the political questions I'll never answer because I have uh, friends and acquaintances on both sides and this is a political free zone. Enough with the politics. I only concern myself with politics when I have to vote and especially other people's politics. I'm Canadian. How do you choose your color palette for the website? Depends on the subject, right? Depends on the subject. You find, um, also depends on the target audience. Um, if you have a nightclub, you can go with, you know, darker themes, uh, more exciting red Vegas colors, right? Uh, if you're selling high-end furniture, you might want to go with more subtle muted tones, you know? So it depends on the subject. Also, it depends on the, uh, your, well, that's target audience. Also, the psychology of the viewer depending on what they're looking for, right? Um, so it depends, you know, so I hope that helps, right? Mm, it also can lead from the logo. So let's say you're developing a website for a particular company and their logo has a certain color scheme or the font they use have a certain characteristic. You, the whole design of the site should stem from that logo, right? If that makes sense. Um, as a general tip for design, Keep your design really, really simple because then it's really easy to um, change the feel of the page uh, that way. Uh, Sadiq says, I'm going to sign up for your mentorship program this month. Thank you. Ah, cool. Thanks for joining. Yeah, I, I just put up a new uh, money course in there and the, the advanced psych stuff and communication stuff is going in pretty soon. That's the lizard wizard stuff. Yes, that's what I meant about the difference between U.S. can and U.E. Starting business with less than 10 years of experience seems bold or downright credit. Would, would it be fun to try it the other way, you know, freelance? No, no, no. If you want to start business, start the younger the better. The younger the better. Because whether you have 10 years experience in industry or you don't, uh, you're going to make mistakes when you're starting a business. Um, people are usually pretty surprised about how much they have to take care of and manage and what, what's important when they start a business. So it's better to do it when you're younger so you have runway to mess up. You're going to mess up along the way. It's normal. Even Steve Jobs almost bankrupted Apple at one point. But yeah, he almost bankrupted it. Then they kicked him out. Then he came back uh, several years later because the new people at Apple almost bankrupted it. And then, uh, and then Bill Gates, Microsoft Bill Gates, had to bail out Apple. They bailed out Apple, excuse me. You know, Apple today is the biggest company in the world, right? So, you know, yeah, you have to expect uh, f issues with starting business. So start earlier. Start earlier than later. Don't start when you're older. It's, it's, you can, but better start younger so you have runway to mess up, you know? Uh, uh, we go, how we do it? How we do it for time? 34. Okay. Good. I taught myself how to code. I know the fundamentals in Java and want to be a programmer. How would you jump into this? Would you, 
how would you jump into this world if you would be in my position or is it better to go into Angular Studio? If you like Java, then reach out to some nonprofits and say, listen, I want to, I know how to write code. Here are my GitHub, here's my GitHub, here's my website. I want to work for free on a stash basis. Find a company to do it. If you don't like Java coding, then jump into whatever it is you like to do, but check out the local job market. Uh, from my experience, some customers are old fashioned. It is very important to also focus on bringing the customers to today's standards like mobile first concepts and auto, not autoplay vids on the, the index. Yeah, well, you sell them on the new concepts based on impacting their sales. You say, what autoplay vids, I agree 100%. That's the most annoying thing ever, forcing people to watch content. Also, another thing that pop really drives me bananas is when you have pop-ups that appear in the middle of the, you, you open up a page and all of a sudden, boop, sign up to our newsletter. You're like, get that out of the, get that out of the way. You don't want that, right? So whatever you do, make the visit to the site fun. Make it fun, make it pleasant, you know? If you want people to sign to the newsletter, have it prominently displayed, but don't shove, shove, you know, don't shove it in their face, you know. So I agree, yeah, autoplay. So you got to explain to the clients in terms of their bottom line. They're concerned about making sales. Say, listen, this is gonna anger a little bit, anger people. They have displayed the video prominently, make it obvious that this is a video to play, but let them choose if they want to play that video. Uh, we'll see. Is WordPress best for freelancing or is Python data analytics a better option? For freelancing, you're probably gonna find much more work in WordPress freelancing. It's just the nature of the market. Again, it's not a statement about the quality of the, of the work, it's just a question of uh, demand. You had my curiosity, now you have my attention. Oh. Cool. Ah. Uh, Let's say Michel de Pissit, Michel Pissit Fry, that translate Michael, little brother. Salut mon ami Stéphane. Hello, my friend Stéphane. How can a developer properly plan out a project before we actually start to code in it? Or is it all cowboy coding? Now you, um, how do you plan out probably before you actually start going? If it's got a visual interface, it's like you're doing a web app or something, or even a you know a mobile app. It's got a visual interface, meaning people are interacting with it. Um, you dot, you start with the screen. Just sketch out the screens on paper and pen. Screen one, view or views as they say. You know, draw out boxes. You know this is going to be a select box. This is going to be a results box. You know this could be a login page. You draw out all the screens because the screens will tell you uh, will imply the functionality that's in the application. It will also imply uh, what data you have to store, and will also help you determine the type of data that it is, whether it's uh, data that doesn't have complex relationships, which means you may want to use a NoSQL database in that situation, or if you do have complex relationships, like, I don't know, an online store where you have clients and you have all their orders and their orders have many products, there's a lot of relationships there. So that would be better for SQL database, right? Um, so, Doing the screens first will help you really define that. The next thing I do is the database. You do your screens, you do the database, and you make sure everything's cool, and you go over, make sure you're storing all the data that people want, and then you do the middle layer, which is all the logic, all the coding. So views, screens, draw it on paper, then database, confirm, write your code. Step one, two, three. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. How are we doing for time? All right, well, we're gonna be closing off soon. What do you think about the Linux ecosystem, PyPhone, PineTap? I haven't looked at that in the longest time. <clears throat> longest time, but Linux is cool. I know we should go to school for these careers versus learning on our own. No, it depends. If you wanna work for larger organizations, you open the doors very much more quickly if you go to higher education. But if you're thinking about doing your own thing, freelancing, maybe working for small business, then you don't need to go to school. Okay. Uh, what do you say about, what do you say about digital marketing? It is marketing. If you're gonna marry marketing, you're gonna be digital marketing. Um, is it good as a business to get into? 
I know people do it, they do well. Now, the pre problem with digital marketing as a business is that the barrier to entry is quite low. You know, you hit, you, you know, you hit like on, uh, you, you post to Instagram, you know, you post to social, it's a bit more than that, but the barrier to entry is low. So a lot of people can get into it. Doesn't mean a lot of people are doing it well, but a lot of people can get into it. So when the barrier to entry is lower, uh, it drives down the value because clients, unless they're well-educated and more importantly, more experienced, they may not know the difference between somebody who's really good at it versus somebody who isn't. You see that with design a lot. Um, a lot of times the client doesn't know good design from bad, right? So you, can, you might be, uh, unless you have a sophisticated client who understands that your UI and UX skills are superior, but when it comes to application development, there is a higher barrier to entry, which increases the value of that skill set as a general. What do you think about Webflow supplementing it with code? Why not? If it works for your app, use it. I'm, it's just a tool in my, my opinion. Who is the favorite combat fighter in the current century? Who is your favorite combat fighter in the current century? You mean active now or or, or just in my lifetime or last, I don't know. That's a hard one. That's a hard one. There are a lot of good ones. I, I don't follow it as closely as I used to. Uh, but, you know, the usuals, you know. Like Conor McGregor, a lot of fun to watch. Uh, I actually like used to like watching um, Floyd Mayweather because he's very technical. He's like... If you are have a fighter, if you have fighting background, you can appreciate Floyd Floyd Mayweather's uh, superior tactics. He's the type of fighter who uses timing uh, rather than uh, other attributes. He really relies on timing his opponent. So that's why it usually takes him a few rounds before he starts dominating, because it takes a few rounds to pick up on your opponent's timing. See, in fighting, in ring fighting anyway. Uh, Timing is a huge function of it. So the better fighters hide their timing from you. So it's hard to pick up on what's going to happen. So the superior the fighter that you fight, the harder it is to figure out their timing. Um, so Floyd, who's really good at picking up on timing, you see, it, it takes him a few rounds to get their timing, then he just starts dominating easily. And that's his, so he's very tactical. He's very tactical. Uh, in that regard. So I like watching him in, for that. I think he's, uh, you know, he's really good with his uh, skills there. But, you know, whereas Conor McGregor, he's, they're, all, they're all very high level and everything, but he relies a little less on that and a lot on using his power punch, right, knocking people out. Floyd was not a knockout puncher. But they're both great. Mass censorship of conservatives in America and who wants freedom? Oh, I get no politics. Sorry, guy. Uh, hi, Seven. I am a senior software engineer. Work at a nice company in Berlin. Congrats. Have I been to Berlin? I don't know. My, Germany has the best beer. I have been to Ber Germany. The best beer. Anyway, my current stack is JS TypeScript plus U. That sounds like a cool stack, actually. Recently, I tried to use Flutter and really love it. Yeah, yeah I love... I looked at Flutter when it just came out in alpha or beta or whatever. And I looked at it briefly and I said, this is a good tech. So, yeah. And that's what I hear. People who use Flutter, they say it's fantastic. So, um, let me get back to it. What's he saying? Do you think it's worth to switch? Only if there's jobs, man. Only if there's jobs. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, frame out the business challenge. Frame in, frame it out technically. Apply technology. So, that's it. Frame out a business challenge, frame it technically, and have to, yeah, I can, that's a good, that's the process, yeah. Uh, all right, where we good? Yeah, you get, you get, you get gigs there, there's no question, there's no question that, if you throw in a little uh, PHP WordPress coding skills, and you're going to supercharge your freelance business. Hi, Steph. Concerning PC hardware too, do you think one would need, e.g., two 27-inch monitors for web dev work? No. How would doing some vid on freelance web dev set up? Ah, how about doing... I used to. Like, I used to have two huge monitors. And even in video editing, I think, for me, 
you get yourself a 5K or a really nice 4K main, main display, like 20, 27 inch. And then you have maybe your laptop screen as for your, your toolboxes, if you will. Um, and I think then you're pretty good with that. Uh, yeah, let's correct Sadiq. Uh, mm, all right, we're getting, how are, we, how are we doing here? 150, all right. If you like the stream, let me know. G give me a thumbs up. This is good for the algorithms and also tells me. Example, food industry, what is the color? Psychological hunger, satisfaction, pay attention to color, but, but oranges are presented with the supermarket. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's exactly. Subject, it's all very subject. Uh, 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 very good, very good. <laughs> all right. Is your opinion, what's the best back-end framework to quickly build an API for mobile clients? Basic CRUD operations plus auth. Also to learn the basics of back-end development. I think a lot of them are really good. I like PHP Laravel because it opens up a whole bunch of freelancing opportunities for you. But whether you learn Python Django or Flask, PHP Laravel, or Go.net, uh, C-sharp.net, they're all pretty good. They're all pretty good, you know. Um, even Ruby Rails, you know. It's uh, I would just look at job opportunities um, in your area and just dabble a little bit and see what you prefer. A lot of times it comes down to that. What, you know, job opportunities, number two, what you prefer. That's it. Um, a node, of course, node, and uh, I keep forgetting JavaScript, uh, node, uh, and uh, Express.js. But I hear that their package management is still a big mess. I don't know, but you, I was looking at it when I was, I don't know how many years ago it was, a few years back when we were rewriting Studio Web from scratch and it was an old code igniter thing. And uh, we were looking at Node and I think it was Express. And I just looked at the package management. It was just a big mess at the time. Uh, uh, so I don't know today. I would imagine it's better. How good, how many good projects should I have in my portfolio as a self-taught when applying for a job? Yeah, three is fine. Uh, here we go. Didi's guy, what's Didi saying? I lived in the EU for 10 plus years. I know the pressure is real in the EU to be either an employee or a government worker. Being an entrepreneur is considered silly and weird by most there. <laughs> there you go. Uh, do you feel comfortable explaining programming fundamentals in French? Um, I would have some difficulty there because some of the terminology would escape me en français. So uh, I can speak French, but I don't, I don't, it would, it would be trickier for me. There's no question about it. I would use a lot of franglais. Franglais is uh, Quebec uh, French where we use English words that just sound French. So, for example, in Quebec, uh, you know, you have the word a hot dog. A hot dog is a hot dog. So, you know, so... In Quebec, they would say hot dog, as opposed to, uh, I don't know what they, sh sh I don't even know what the French word is anymore. So anyway, so I would use a lot of Franglais. So I said, I would say, okay, en, Java, en JavaScript, on, on fait des fonctions. You know, that's actually a French word though. Anyway. Uh, uh, hey, Stefan, UX designer, how is your relation to code today? How's my relationship? I don't code much at all anymore. I just don't have the time. Um, at some point uh, in your career, you're gonna have to make a decision if you're gonna go into management or you're gonna stay in code. It's, it's hard to do both, you know? Uh, I did coding for a long time, a long time. So I did, I did my fish. I miss it sometimes, don't get me wrong, but when you're coding, you're very focused on a very particular thing and you, it's hard to be thinking about broad subjects and having people ask questions and dealing with new clients and dealing with client problems and thinking about where the company is going to go. I can't do all that at the same time. Uh, I'm, glad I like, I'm glad you like my streams. I appreciate that. Uh, what is software development? It is writing code to build software. That's it. Yeah, no problem. No, no. Uh, okay, how are we doing? 
Uh, how you doing with your keto? Um, keto's pretty good. Keto's pretty good. It's um, like I said, I've been on keto fairly strict, not perfectly strict, but fairly strict for about four or five months now, and I've lost about 18 pounds of flubber, and uh, feeling pretty good. Uh, but I do have, I'm not pure keto. I do have my uh, Japanese noodles every now and then. But yeah, yeah. I I'd also do a lot of intermittent fasting as well. So that's good. Uh, I don't have an opinion. I have not looked at uh, Thrape. I would use Django for larger applications and I would use Flask for smaller one-offs. Uh, Sir Flutter React Native, which one is better for freelance now and years to come? Well, I, I have my crystal ball here, so let's see what I can discern from this the skeletal ball. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's going to be bigger. I don't think React is going anywhere. Um, I would look at the local job market. I think, uh, yeah, I would lean towards Flutter personally, but I don't think React is going anywhere. You should be okay, you know. Uh, have you returned to stay? I don't know what that is. I've been hearing that spring boot salaries are quite high. Very possible. I was totally uh, talking globally. What are your thoughts on spring boot? I haven't used it, but spring is the, the best framework in Java for sure. Uh, Rod Johnson. Uh, D. Jones. Steph, you're my mentor. You just don't know it. Well, I'm glad I could help. Uh, my goal with these streams, amongst other things, is to... Uh, to pour my decades of experience to download it into your brains so that you don't have to spend decades trying to figure all this stuff out for yourself. I've had some mentors, they helped me out here and there and they were very useful. If I figure, hey, I might as well just put it all together. Here it is. Uh, where are all the coding management tutorials? I don't know where they are. Have you ever need to use Marshall because you didn't get paid? <laughs> no, no. Because <laughs> I don't, uh, they don't get the code base until they pay me. So no problems there. Steph, are you back leaving on the same old apartment or still in downtown? I'm downtown. This is my new, my new uh, condo here. And uh, yeah, we're still doing renovations. Uh, we're still... Are you fluttered by flutter? This guy's full of jokes here. <laughs> Learning React, yes. Now loving it, everything simplify can pass without identifying, without identity requirements. Cool. Cool. Again, all right, guys, that's it. 52 minutes. I gotta go. Um, have a good night. Have a good weekend. And I hope this stream was useful. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you hated it, Show your disdain for my face by giving me not just one thumbs down, give me two. Show how bad I am. All right, we'll end off with this comment. Keto is bad if you are not strict on it. You, you need, depending on how your body is, from 7 to 21 days to adapt 100% to burning ketones. If it is best, eat whole foods, adjust the K-Cow only. Uh, potentially, yeah. All right. Um, I, I'll, I, I'll tell you what I do. I use uh, PHP Laravel. It works fantastic. It's a great framework. All right, guys, that's it for now. So I will actually leave you with uh, my, my main ASMR video. So don't forget your mask. Of course not. Yeah, you know, there's always, I'll leave you, you know, who knows what's going to happen, but, you know, you always got to look at risk reward when you, choose things that you do in life, you know? So consider that, what is the risk and what is the reward for what you do? And if the, if the reward is very small or if the reward is very unlikely, then may, and the risk is definite, it's probably not a good idea to get into that, you know? And that's just being smart. Um, yeah, all right, thanks for the thumbs up everybody, buddy. I appreciate it, we'll do some ASMR in Cape Elizabeth, Maine. I love Cape Elizabeth, Maine, one of my favorite places.